Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so I'm country director for Four Says Metals. Um, we are, again, like um, the previous presenter, a, a purely uranium-focused play. We've got uh, a single project in Namibia, very advanced, and I will, I'll take you through that. It's just our normal forward-looking statements. It's all on our website. Um, I'm not going to dwell on the uranium market. I think a lot of uh, already been said this morning about it. Um, we can see the trend um, and the supply and demand gap is just widening. And I tend to agree with Murray that uh, we're going to see even higher prices um, over the coming months um, as this situation in the market starts to unfold. So, Namibia, um, a very long history of uranium production. We're the third largest uh, producer in the world. And, uh, you know, with uh, three new uh, projects that is now fully permitted and uh, licensed, um, that scene is set to change. And I do believe that we might see three additional operations coming into production in Namibia and pushing us even larger on the, on the global stage of uranium production. <clears throat> so this is where our project is situated. Um, this project was acquired by Forsyth in 2006. So basically, as we had the previous, you know, bull run in the market, um, later on they acquired the Number Plus uh, project, which is uh, our um, second um, deposit that was sort of drilled out in 2011 to 2014. Uh, project went into care and maintenance, you know, during the low uranium prices and really started to resurface um, around uh, to, um, 2021 uh, when the board decided time has come for uranium um, that has moved up and uh, we re-established a project team um, and started to dust off the previous work that was, that was done. Uh, we are very fortunate uh, with our project location um, and we are sort of 25 kilometers off the main um, um, tar mac road to, to this uh, city of Vintuk. Um, parallel to that runs the main railway line. We are about 25 kilometers away from connecting to the NAM water infrastructure and power infrastructure. Um, so, you know, basic infrastructure requirements for the project is pretty close by and, and easy to implement. So that just uh, gives us a bit more of a focus on the mineral rights. Uh, the sort of rectangular in blue is our main deposit. It contains about 70% of our reported uranium at this stage. It's called the Valencia um, main ore body, as well as a small associated uh, little uh, satellite pit. Um, that project is fully licensed. Um, it's had a mining license since 2011, still um, active, um, you know, until uh, June 30, uh, 2033. The all um, the EPL, uh, uh, all of the environmental clearances uh, is also fully intact. So we basically shovel ready uh, on that uh, ore body. The ore body in green is our number plus. We've just been... Um, granted a renewal uh, of that mineral right there. We've already applied for the mining license over that ore body, and we hope that during the course of this year, we will also receive the actual mining license for, for that project. Subsequently, we've also applied for two additional EPLs to try and fill the gap between the two ore bodies. Those two ore bodies is about four and a half kilometers apart, making them, you know, um, in close enough proximity to establish our processing facility between the ore bodies and create a scalable operation where we can double the production, you know, once uh, the mining license on the number plus deposit is, is granted to us. This is uh, the work that was done, um, you know, about a decade ago. Um, when all the uh, drilling was done on the Valencia main and number plus bits, um, we are um, in the process of um, re-evaluating, remodeling uh, all of that historic work with the latest, you know, uh, modern uh, methodologies to, to uh, optimize those resources, geotechnical work that's going into it um, to establish, obviously, 
you know, the, the correct sort of uh, open pit uh, design parameters. And uh, we've also started to evaluate uh, different processing technologies, which I'll get to. So um, in the co coming of this year, we will basically uh, be reevaluating this and, and putting a new execution strategy together that will replace the old 2015 DFS, which we believe is pretty much outdated under today's economic environments um, with a rapid moving uranium price. Those are just some conceptual um, updated layouts of the Valencia main and Valencia satellite pit. Um, and it just gives you the, pros the proximity to, to each other. The exciting part for us is obviously that um, in the downturn post Fukushima, um, the previous teams identified a number of uh, continuation or um, unexplored um, areas of interest. We will be focusing um, starting within the next couple of days some additional drilling um, around the uh, Valencia main pit. Uh, we've got what we call the Jolly Zone, sort of to the to the north of uh, the main pit, um, which um, there has been a little bit of drilling, but ins insignificant amounts to fully assess the potential. And then we also got the Valencia East and South areas um, that we will be exploring to see if we can increase uh, the, the resource potential around that. Similarly, um, the number plus project, you can see there the existing pit goes all the way to the bottom of our boundary. We have applied for um, an extension of that uh, footprint there. We do know that mineralization continues there. As soon as that is granted, you know, we will step out and, and fill that in. And we do believe that there's upside potential from a resource perspective. And then there's uh, the number plus area A um, that has been undrilled. Uh, we've had some boots on the ground. We've mapped it. It looks very good. Um, and uh, we will be, you know, post the uh, Valencia drilling, we will also um, move into that area and, and do some resource update drilling uh, in that area. So this uh, gives us uh, a bit of an overview of the work that has been done over the last 12 months since the, the project team really got uh, boots on the ground. We've literally taken the 2015 DFS. We unpacked it. Uh, we critically uh, critiqued and reviewed it. Um, and, you know, over time, uh, over the last decade, a lot of additional work has been done on the Namibian uranium projects. And the tendency, you know, has has moved from uh, tank leach to heap leach projects. And we concur with uh, the other developments on the Alaskite uh, uh, projects. You know, both Rossing is looking at it, uh, Husap is uh, looking at it, Bannerman has based their main uh, technology on, on hip leach, um, and it all just makes sense. You know, we've rerun the numbers, we've done the trade-off, and we've made a decision to to switch to to a tank leach, uh, away from a tank leach operation to a hip leach operation. That gives us uh, a number of benefits, you know, uh, it's less power intensive, uh, quicker to get into production. It gives us the flexibility to have a scalable project, um, so easy to expand once the number plus pit or some additional resources comes in, we can increase the, the, the racetrack foot, footprint and basically just, you know, go in a modular fashion and um, expand the, the size of the operation. Um, so what is our strategy? We basically, um, at this site, understand that there's going to be an opportunity you know, in this bull market. So it's all about moving this project into production as quickly as possible. We want to start with a smaller scale and then ramp it up. We want to reduce the capex and the opex um, by shifting it to a heap leach project instead of a tank leach. We're now also looking at contractor mining instead of owner mining that was previously envisaged. Um, and the objective is to, within the next few weeks, to produce an updated PEA based on that business strategy, while we parallel processing the technical work that will ultimately support a DFS 
to follow hopefully by, you know, around uh, end of Q2, early Q3 um, in, the, in this year. Our capital structure, um, as you can see there, uh, we've got a good blend between institutional and retail. Management has got some skin in the game. Um, our market cap fluctuates you know, around the 200, 215 million Canadian dollars. We list it on the main uh, board. Um, in Toronto on the TSX, obviously with dual listings um, in Namibia and also on the, on the Frankfurt. So we currently still sit with uh, about uh, 12 to 13 million uh, Canadian dollars uh, in cash. We, so we're well funded for our current uh, work programs and uh, we currently have no debt um, at this stage. Very experienced uh, board um, and management team. So I'm not going to run through all of that. That information is available on our uh, website if you want to uh, read up on the experience of our uh, board of directors. And then um, headed by myself in Namibia, um, we've put a, a core team, which is now comprising of eight people. We've just had a, a mechanical engineer joining our team. And we have a, a professional you know, body of about 27 professionals that is actively working on the project, pushing it through to you know, the PA and then ultimately uh, onto a DFS level. So in summary, um, Valencia is fully permitted. We shovel ready. The market is ready. Um, we in one of the best mining jurisdictions um, to move this project forward. We have extremely strong government support. Uh, we've got one of the companies that really has got a, a team behind it with boots on the ground that has actually been involved in the um, Namibian uranium industry, that has built projects, that has operated projects. Um, and if I can say that with that team that I've got, I can actually go and execute this project and, and build it. Um, we've got further opportunities to optimize um, our technology and certain processes. We are definitely excited about the wider uh, geological exploration. And uh, I think we've got the team that can actually pull this off uh, and build one of the, the, the new mines, uh, hopefully starting later this year. Thank you.